Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be opening the sample prac exam template and solving it so that you understand how to import the project and the steps to take. Go to Eclipse, right click in the package explorer, you might first have to choose your workspace, instruction sheet provides what workspace to choose. Right click in package explorer, click on import. Choose General Existing Projects into Workspace and not Archive File. So don't choose Archive File, choose Existing Projects into Workspace. Next. It's then that you select Archive File, Browse, in Practical Exam 1. We'll open sample practical exam one template and it has a project that can be imported. You can click on finish and it imports the project into Eclipse. It also has prac exam instructions but the actual exam won't have instructions in the project itself. They are provided separately. Click on source and there are three files in the default project. The only file that you need to modify or you should modify is all in one .java. And even in that, do not modify any method header. The method header is the heading of a method. So do not change this public double get mark to public static get public static double get mark or public int get mark etc. Leave it as it is. Whichever method says do not modify please do not touch that. The getter is provided because it is critical to test the methods. The second file is all in one test.java and it contains tests for the methods that you write. Please do not modify this file. So if we go back to all in one .java, and you can see that the first question is a class definition for gradebook entry. So all your assessments are out of 100. So the mark is out of 100, which means that the range is 0 to 100. The Java doc is very important. So please read the Java doc very carefully. If M is less than 0, set instance variable mark to 0. You can see that the parameter's name is m, the instance variable, which is the variable that each object of class gradebook entry has, is mark. And it says, if m is less than 0, set instance variable mark to 0. Before I complete this method, I'll run the all-in-one test.java. And you can see that the score is 0, and all the tests fail. When we go to all-in-one.java and complete the code if m is less than 0, mark should become 0. Otherwise, if m is more than 100, mark should become 100. Otherwise, mark should become m. Now, that's the correct implementation of set mark. You can go to all-in-one test.java, double-click on test set mark. So you only run that method and click on run. And you can see that test set mark now passes and it shows you a score of 15 because one method has passed. Continue just like that and you can see the default constructor should set the mark to 0 0.1. So you set the mark to 0 0.1 using the setter and that's it. Similarly, the parameterized constructor set the mark to M using the setter. So set mark to M. Compare to, so you're comparing the calling object with the parameter object. Return 1, if calling object's mark, which is this dot mark, is more than parameter object's mark, which is other dot mark. If that's the case, return 1. If it's less than, if calling object's mark is less than other dot mark, return minus 1. And in all other cases, return 0. Save your file. 
run the tests and you can see that default constructor compared to setter and parameterized constructor pass and your score is already 40. How good is that? We go back to allinone.java and our question one is over. The second question is, assume that the parameter n is more than zero, return the product of integers from one to n. If it's not very clear what that means, take a look at the test and you can see that factorial of five should be 120, factorial of one should be one, factorial of three should be six. Put two and two together, using the java doc and the test data you'll see that it should multiply all integers from 1 to n and return that value initially the result is 1 because it's a multiplicative computation so the multiplicative identity is 1 then we go for all integers from 1 to less than or equal to n each time result becomes whatever it is so far multiplied by the new value of i when the loop is over and that's why I highly recommend to add end loop comment return the result save this go to the test run the factorial and it passes now please note that the score is 20 because I've only run that method if you select all and run it your score is 60 only two methods left, test total. Now I'm gonna make a deliberate mistake while implementing this. This one returns the total of all the items. Assume that it's not null, so our result is zero. I go through each item of the array and I'm gonna make a mistake deliberately here that I'll add instead of the item, the index to the result and return the result. Go to test total and run it. Now you'll see that there's an error that it expects 4.5 but the value was 0 because 0 was the index that you added to the result and it's at line 83. So you can go back and take a look. Are you going through each item of the array? Yes. Is the initial value of variable 0? Yes. What is it that you're adding to the result? What you're adding is i which is the index, not the item. So change that to array i, save it, run the total again, test again, and it passes. Select all and run, and your score is 80. Only test intersection is left. Please note that intersection. The last question of prac exam one is an advanced question. Uh, what I would recommend you to do is to comment out the return new int 5 i'll explain why that's the case now let's say you start solving the question intersection by looking at the tests you can see intersection of uh, 1729 and 8517 167 is has two items first item is 1 and second item is 7 if you read the specs carefully a lot of information can be derived from that. Assume that A is not null, each item in the array A is different from the others. Similarly for B, return the array containing items that belong to both arrays, but in the order that they occur in A. So, it would be really helpful if you create a helper method exists in an array a target to check if the target exists in an array or not all you have to do is go through the array if you find the target at any index immediately return true if the loop finishes and you still haven't found the item only then can you return false so this method will be really helpful for you now you can see that there is one extra curly bracket which causes a compilation error in my program highlighted by the red cross in my file, package, source, and project. Press Ctrl A, Ctrl I on Windows and you can see that there's an extra curly bracket. You can close it. 
ensure that the end of class whatever class you get is there before you start public class all in one so once we create the exists method our job becomes easier because I can say I can check how many items exist in both arrays I go through each item in A check if the item AI also exists in B if that's the case then the count of common items increases by one which means I now know how many items are in the result so I can create an array of that size do the same thing again but this time putting the item AI into result but please note that you're not going to put AI into result I no because it's possible that the first item doesn't occur in both arrays it's only the fourth item that occurs in both arrays so A3 should be copied into result 0 so we create another index k equals 0 and it's k where you put the value and since you've put a value you increase k by 1 now again there's a compilation error you can see that the method has an error it says the method must return a result of type integer array which have which we have forgotten so we can return the array result if for some reason you're not able to complete the code do not worry the simplest way to do that to get around that problem of avoiding the penalty for compilation error is your code that does not pass the test comment it out completely go to the method and add a return statement in this case it's simply returning the array B which is fine now your test will not pass but at least you won't get a 25% compilation error penalty on top so that's my hint that's my tip to avoid compilation errors comment out the code that doesn't work and add a and right click on the error and add the return statement to the relevant method anyways in this case we're going to uncomment my code and run the test and see if it works of course it works because I wrote it it's probably being too cocky anyways uh, you can see that all seven tests pass and the score is 100 and unless you have hard-coded the, 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 the methods in all-in-one based on the test or you have modified the tests whatever mark you get is the mark you'll eventually get in your gradebook so I hope this little video helps you and best of luck for all three prac exams I hope you enjoy the experience cheers